welcome to this Taking Time with Tasha. You find me continuing with my Gold Wet Leaves project in this video, and I wanted to share some of the leaves I've done before where I really feel like I've just let myself go. If you've already watched the first video of this series, then you will have seen some pretty traditional gold work approached in the form of couching, which is what the first video is all about. And alongside those couching leaves, I've also tried some cut work and applique based ones too, which I will be sharing in the future. But for today, I wanted to show you the three leaves that don't really fall into the traditional gold work techniques categories that I think you might also quite enjoy, because I sure did. This whole project was conceived whilst I was finishing my last one, the bird sigil project, partly because I had some leftover materials that I thought would suit this as well. One such material is the knitted tubular mesh, which I'm going to start by applying to act a little bit like an applique fabric. It's not an applique fabric because you can stretch it and squash it and make it suit the shape you want it to make, but it's really great for coverage like that and it's kind of easier than applique in fact. Perhaps if you want to create some ground coverage but don't really like applique fabrics or are having trouble with fraying and that sort of thing, this might be a great alternative for you. I'll link my supplier in the description below if you want to get some for yourself. It does take a little while to come, which is another reason why I wanted to put what I have of this stuff to good use, as the place I found is in Canada, but I guess it depends where you are, so that might be a moot point if you're somewhere more convenient. As you can see, when I'm digging out these little bits sometimes, I do actually have to dig for them, like amongst four or five other types of beads or whatever I've all chucked in together for storage. Anyway, so along with the gold tubular knit, I have this previously mentioned bag of gold work scraps to utilise, because I didn't want them to become one of those sad but beautiful things. You know the ones where they're too nice to waste, and then you go on holding this tiny scrap forever and ever in your craft box and look at it in years to come, when you don't even really know what it was, or should have been anymore, or where it came from, but you just thought it was too nice to throw away and then you look at it and it makes you a bit sad? Well, not this time my friend. I'm using this project to gather up all those little pieces and hopefully make them into something nice. And even if it isn't something nice at the end, I will have used them to strong on myself into trying out new things. And that's what I've been wanting to do for too long and will hopefully be a better and more well-rounded embroiderer for it at the end. I know, it's a beautiful dream, right? I can feel it too, you're sold. For the other leaves that I've been doing up until this point, they've all been quite by the book. Well, perhaps with the exception of the woven leaf, which was a nice idea, then it ended up being a hot mess in the middle, and still kind of poses more questions than it answers by the end, but I still kind of like it. It's quite good if you don't look directly at it, but I digress. So I'm going to try some essing around the edge of this leaf, as all the others have had a pretty simple couched edge, if any edge at all, and we need some more fancy edges at this party. It's going to be made up of a mix of rough pearl and smooth pearl so that we can see a bit more of that twisting effect. And then the plan is to top it off with some even more bougie bits in the form of some spangles down the vein. Other times when I've used smooth and rough pearl for cut work, the element I struggle with the most is getting the length of the pearl right, so I feel like essing might be a great alternative for me, as they should for the most part be all the same length to look right with the exception of the little two half stitches on the end of a line. I've still managed to get a few that are too long, but never mind, you can't win them all. I had thought for the second half that I would try and continue the same direction for the twist as the first half, but that wouldn't sit right after the pointy edge, so after a rethink, I am going to try and mirror the twist instead, which I think will work a lot better. The points are still a little bit clunky, and I have a few incidences of cracking here and there, which perhaps I was being too rough, or perhaps they were just too long in the end still. Introducing the spangles isn't really more of a challenge, but it does add another element, which is a fun look. The spangles, as you can tell, aren't really spangled. Just some leftover brass sequins from the bird project, which I literally have eight left. So I hope that's going to be enough to fill the space. I'm trying to space the pearls out a little bit longer than I did with the other essing to compensate for this, but they do sort of roll back in on themselves, so it's sort of a losing battle. 
It turns out that eight is the perfect amount, and I'm choosing to believe that this was fate, and they were always intended to end up on this leaf. They all seem to be tarnishing at different rates, perhaps they were exposed to something different, so I'm trying to lay them with alternative darkness to lightness in an attempt to make it look more considered. This next leaf that I wanted to try is very much inspired by other incredible gold work embroidery work I see. I should preface this by saying it's not an instructional video, only the documentation of my experiments, so if you want to learn this technique, which I believe is an old Russian style, then you really should check out Submarina 707 as her work really is incredible. You won't regret it. From her work in progress you can gauge a little bit of the steps that go on behind it, but obviously to a much more technical degree. Though you can tell there's all sorts of parts for this and in her examples she normally works on a jersey laid over the top which I haven't done because I'm going to stick to my leaf pattern fabric. But I'm going to try something along those kind of lines all the same and just see how it turns out. In preparation for this I've already transferred some of the threads that I want to use onto a single empty thread reel as I anticipate that keeping the tension spread evenly might be one of the most difficult parts of this. I've also padded my leaf in advance, with the addition of some extra string along the edges to give them a sharper look. My attempt to keep the thread mix even on the extra reel helped, but didn't work entirely, so I'm sure there must be a better way of doing this. I just wound three threads together for now, but I'm starting to wonder if I could have done more for faster coverage, or if that really would just be asking for tensioning trouble. All the same, this sort of couching approach to satin stitch seems to be a great way to include machine or fine threads into gold work without putting them under the strain of actually stitching with them through the surface of the fabric. I've tried to do that before, and if you're trying on a fabric with almost any body to it, it's going to fray and break so fast it's really not worth it. But it seems to work pretty successfully with this approach. I have been finding it quite slow overall but that's not really all that surprising given the thinness of these threads versus what I've recently become accustomed to. To top it all off, it only seems fitting to use the largest pearl pearl edge that I have, which needs a little stretch to start. I've laid the centre vein in first, which in hindsight I think was a mistake, as it turns out to be a tiny bit too short on each end, and you can really tell once the outside edge is on. But you live and learn, right? This extra thick pearl pearl is definitely a challenge to work with, as it needs a lot more encouragement into the shape than the others that I've used before. As the Essing edge leaf went so well, I fancy trying another edge to see how it worked as it seemed to contain the recipe for pearl success for me, one length of pearl. So this time I thought I'd do some chain stitch and see how that goes. It needs to be quite big to give the pearl enough room to make the chain without cracking and to have enough space inside each loop to encompass the next, then we'll see what there is left to fill after that. I have noticed I can be a bit lazy when it comes to using my laying tool, but for the chain stitch it really is more effective than your fingers, as you can get in the chain loop and hold it in the right place whilst you place the next stitch inside of it. I know that should be second nature, but the truth is, it's often easier to use your hands, even though it's not good for the longevity of your gold work, and we want to do things in the right way and build up good habits. But in this case, it is all round better. It does help that I love the feel of the stiletto on my hand. The balance of it really does make it an all-round nice thing to use.
I love looking at the work of other contemporary gold rack embroiderers who don't like to be too confined by the rules. It's a great way to start by learning those rules, but then once you have, you can bend them and break them to some extent, like that embroidery girl on Instagram who's a great one for this. She makes her own sculptural gold work pieces, usually little animals that have such a life of their own and so much character. It would seem like she builds off a sort of cutwork technique as a basis, but the way that she layers it all up really does make it something entirely else of her own in a really fascinating way. Unsurprisingly, there's only a tiny bit of fill area left after the chain, so I'm going to try and just drop some loops down there to fill in this area. It's not a traditional stitch, once again, though I think it will be a nice addition as it reminds me of the Cornelli chain machines, which you can alter to create a moss stitch instead. This is where the chain stitch is offset so that it doesn't actually form an effective chain, and you just get this nice looped effect, so I feel like these two will have a similar relationship together. you've enjoyed this video and perhaps it's given you some ideas of some fun things you might like to try of your own. Do let me know in the comments below if there's something that you want to give a try. I'd love to hear from you. But that's all from me for today and I hope to see you in the next leaf video that I've got coming out shortly. Bye for now!